Okay, all of our YouTube folks, this is Apostle Chris Turney here. I'm coming back with another tutorial on the program for the PC, the eSword program, which is a great resource. Uh, the first video I showed you how to download it uh, on your computer. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and uh, we'll go through some of the, uh, I believe, key components that will help you understand how to use it a little bit better. So you may remember, uh, we'll summarize over here your Bible books. Here is actually your Bible verses that are displayed. We've got multiple Bibles that we've downloaded. You can obviously download more. We've got our commentaries there. We've got our dictionaries down here, which I'm going to show you something really cool with that. And then down here we have our journal where you can do study notes, topic notes, uh, and journal notes if you want to uh, basically uh, keep track of the things that you uh that you receive in prayer, whatever, uh, inspirational thoughts, something like that. So let's go up here to where it says Bible. And we're going to come down to search. Okay. And we're just going to go here and we're going to type in the word. We'll type in the word Gentile. Okay. So we see here that the word Gentile is actually found in the King James Version. OK, uh, we, we actually did our search under the King James Version. Now, keep in mind, this is very specific to the translation. OK, if you were to change the translation, these verses would clear and you would have to hit enter again. Uh, but right now, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got two verses. OK, this word is actually found in two verses and it's found twice. So you've got the word found twice in two verses. Sometimes you can find it maybe, maybe it'll display that the word is uh, like four times in two verses because it's mentioned twice in each verse. But in this particular case, we see that the verse is, that the word is found twice in the King James Version. Now, as I mentioned, if you go here, let's go to the American Standard Version. You'll have to come back over here. Just click to get your cursor back in there, double click, hit enter again. And you'll notice that it comes up one time in the American Standard Version, which is Matthew 18, 17. OK, now let's let's use a word that's a little bit. We'll go back to the King James Version. We'll use a word that's a little bit more popular. We will type in faith. Now you see all of the places that the word faith is mentioned in the King James Version. Once again, this is going to be specific. Now, if we scroll all the way down, alrighty, we'll show you at the very bottom down here. You could obviously expedite this by coming over here and just scrolling down faster. I want to bring you to this box toward the end. Okay, there's 231 verses that are found. OK, if you look over to the left, you'll find that there was two verses that this word is found in the Old Testament. It's kind of interesting that the word faith in the King James Version is only found twice in the Old Testament. So, you know, that it's 231 verses, uh, 229 are in the New Testament and two are in the New Testament or two in the Old Testament. Pardon me. 247 matches. That means that this word is actually found 247 times in 231 verses. OK, so look over here and you'll notice it was 12 verses, 12 matches. So there was one one time that was mentioned in each verse. All right. Uh, you'll notice in the book of Acts, there was 14 verses, but 15 matches. So there you'll find that one of those verses had the word in there twice. Over here, you'll you'll see that there was 39 matches in 34 verses. So that just gives you an idea. Uh, some words are important. I know um, I knew somebody one time that had actually uh, done a word study uh, and they were interested to find out how many times the word was actually mentioned in the Bible. And uh, one of those word studies was we studied the word kingdom. OK, and what we what do we do is we take and we study the word kingdom but what we wanted to do is find out how many times the word was found in just the New Testament. So you take the word kingdom, type it in and you come over here and you can separate your search. Old Testament, the Pentateuch is the first five books of the Bible. OK, then you've got history and it will tell you the history there. OK, it tells you um, basically what the historical books are. Uh, and then, of course, you come on down and it's got the wisdom books, the major prophets, the minor prophets. Then we've got the New Testament which is basically split up into the Gospels, Paul's letters, 
the general letters or general epistles, and of course it says the Apocalypse, which is the book of Revelation. So if I want to find out how many times the word kingdom is in the New Testament, I hit this, come back over, and hit enter. And that brings up all the times the word kingdom is mentioned in the New Testament alone. Okay. Now here you can search for all the words that you type in. Uh, you can search for any of the words. If you search for all of the words, that simply means if I put kingdom and I put, let's say, um, see the kingdom. If I put see kingdom and sort of search for all words, it's going to pull up the verses that have both of these words in it. If I switch it to search for any of the words, it's going to give me a different result. Right now I've got seven verses. This is going to give me many more because the word C and the word kingdom now are broken up. And so if it has any of the words, so I go from seven verses to 339 because I search for any of these two words. So I've got verses that have kingdom in it and I got verses that have C in it. And as you can see, uh, no pun intended, uh, the one with C is it far outweighs the ones with kingdom in it. So uh, this is search for an exact phrase, all self-explanatory, guys. If you have an exact phrase you want to put in there, um, then you can put C, the kingdom. And we know in the King James that it should at least come up in the book of John. There we go. All right. So you see, C the kingdom. So now you're looking for the exact phrase. Now it's going to limit it to two verses. It's not going to look for each word individually. It's looking for exactly that phrase. All right. And of course, that's just in the New Testament. You can go back to Bible. OK, and we'll see if it changes anything. May not. Nope. Still two verses throughout the whole Bible. So that's how your search works. Um, now, once you find what it is you're looking for, let's just say you wanted to find this verse in John 3, 3. If you'll double click it. OK, you can double click it and then you can come over here and you can hit OK. That'll cancel that box out. And what it, you'll notice that it brings that verse over here. So now you can see the context of that one verse. You have the whole chapter of John chapter 3 is, is pulled up for you, okay? Now, I mentioned to you uh, earlier uh, about the King James Version with a plus. This, this is really nice because it gives you the opportunity to look at the Greek words or the Hebrew words, depending on which, uh, which testament you're in, the new or old. And just by scrolling over, you have a real good bird's eye view of what's going on there. So... Um, that's a real nice feature to have. Now, let's go back to the King James Version. All right. I want to show you something that works. Now, we're going to we're going to focus down here on the dictionary section. This is actually a Bible dictionary. This, of course, is your Webster's Dictionary. This is the Strong's Dictionary that gives you Greek and Hebrew. This is the Brown's Brown Driver Briggs. And this is basically Hebrew words only. The Thayer is Greek words only. OK, but this is a Bible dictionary. Now, there's plenty more you can download. I just did this for the purpose of kind of doing this tutorial. So if we want to, uh, let's just say we like the word born here. We want to maybe, or maybe we don't know exactly what that word means. Uh, so we just double click it. Okay. And you'll notice that when I double click the word born, this little blue circle comes up. All right. With a little I, which basically stands for information. So if I click the Webster on that, Sometimes it takes a minute. It will pull up the definition for that word. OK, now, if I've already got this open, it makes it really convenient because what I can do is I can just kind of double click on any word and it will change it and it will pull it up in the dictionary down here. Now, notice when I clicked on the word flesh, it not only is available in the Webster's, but it's also available in the Smith Bible Dictionary. So if I wanted to get a Bible, uh, somewhat of a Bible background on that word, I can do that. And of course, under this word, it says sea flood. So apparently this is connected to uh, the whole idea of the flood. So once again, we double click on a word. Bloweth is probably not found in any of these two dictionaries because of the fact that it's not proper English, so to speak. It's old English. Now, if we were over here in the American Standard Version, uh, if we put Marvel, We'll notice that the Webster's has it. So we pull up the Webster's to find out what the definition is. And this is just a real handy tool, guys. It's just really quick. It's really fast. 
and helps you guys to really, you know, pull everything together. And so anyway, that'll be it for this tutorial. And I certainly hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll have more to come.